My mom is siding with my ex-husband during the divorce, and they're coming up with all these accusations and proof of me doing something I didn't do. I don't know why she has his back, but she does, so I have to do something about it. Guys, I'm burying myself in work just to distract from the sadness stemming from what I call family. But I don't think that I can keep it in any longer. So I chose to share my story with everybody here. Long story short, my mother secretly supported my ex-husband during our divorce, so I took them both to court. I'm a 36-year-old woman working in finance, and I'm a newly divorced woman still navigating a single life. It's not because of the new choices I can now explore, but the loneliness, heartbreak, and disappointment of dealing with life alone. Especially when it all comes from the people I once loved with all of my heart. I met my ex-husband when I was 27, and he was 32, at the brokerage firm where we both worked. Our relationship began an enemies-to-lovers thing because of how a sharp-witted, competitive, and occasional heated exchanges we had, which sparked our mutual, um, attraction. We started dating shortly after he kissed me at the company Christmas party. Following a heated argument that now seems trivial, he then quickly proposed to me 12 months into the relationship. See, I was ready for marriage and loved him, so I said yes without any hesitation. The first year of marriage was blissful, but also marked the first crack in our relationship. He was a very attractive man, a classic Prince Charming from a fairy tale. Over six feet tall with blue eyes, effortlessly styled blonde hair, and a dangerously charming demeanor. In contrast, I saw myself as average. On the chubby side, compared to my average height, I was thick, unruly hair as well, and oily skin. Some of my family friends even asked how I managed to trap him which hurt my feelings and ego. It didn't help that he also seemed to think this way. Sometimes he would randomly ask if I felt lucky to be with someone like him. I should have known better, but I also believed I was lucky to have him. So, one year after getting married, my ex had the idea of opening our own marketing agency together because it's always been his dream. He wanted to be a business owner rather than an employee and saw how marketing was taking the world by storm. I found this plan to be reasonable. And since we both had some savings and agreed not to have children anytime soon, we decided to just go for it. The company, it became quite a massive success, attracting clients from all over the world. With such a heavy workload, I paused thinking about having children. Yet that was my idea alone. Then when I asked him who would sacrifice their time to care for the children with all of our workload, he did not hesitate to point at me. He cruelly reminded me that this company was his creation and his baby, and there was no way that he was going to give it up, and he added a misogynistic remark saying that because I was a woman, I should stay home. I may not be as pretty as him, but I'm certain that I'm as smart, capable, and mentally strong as him when it comes to business. Well, this obviously led to a huge fight, which sparked even more conflicts, eventually ending in divorce. I mean, come on, don't get me wrong, I do want children someday. I really do. And I loved him. But the idea of my husband disrespecting me sickens me to the core. How do you expect me to endure such a condition? You know, the divorce was brutal. I never knew my ex could be so cruel and petty. I lost 20 pounds during the process and thought that I would never see a better day. I sold my shares, moved to another city for a fresh start, and opened my own much smaller agency, bringing my best clients with me. After months of tear-soaked pillows, Sleepless nights and pent-up rage, I finally felt like myself again when my company officially launched. However, the business was only stable for a short time as my clients gradually left for vague reasonings. We conducted an internal investigation to ensure that we did nothing wrong, but morally and professionally we found absolutely no issues. I could not let this slide, so I began investigating myself, following the clumsy digital footprint left by somebody who has been in my office. I discovered that my confidential details, such as proposal plans and marketing strategies, has been leaked to my ex. Even though we weren't direct competitors and did not operate in the same city, he still managed to sabotage me from a distance. Yet, the worst part, ladies and gentlemen, was the person who leaked my life's work was my own mother. A retired librarian of 62 years of age. I was shaking frantically when I found out and I could hardly believe my eyes when I saw the security camera footage showing my mother sneaking into my office after our lunch date while I was in a meeting. She said that she wanted to meet me because she missed me, and drove two hours to see me. 
Then she was adamant that she wanted an office tour, and I was stupid enough to leave her alone in the hallway while my office door was not locked. And my laptop was still on because I was running to the meeting room for an emergency. She was tech savvy, but she managed it all without breaking a sweat. I was deeply hurt and obviously disappointed, feeling like my entire world had crumbled. But I went to confront her. She was cold, distant, and a total stranger. She was even mad that I had the guts to confront her. She told me that she hated me and my father, whoever he was, because we were the reason she could not have her dream career. She was a high school prom queen, uh, desired by many, but then she got pregnant with me and all her plans had to be put on hold. I argued that she could still have persuade her dreams if I grew up, but she hit me with the cold fact that my grandfather, like my ex, wanted her to stay home and be a mother because that's what women were supposed to do. You know, not make careers and build a career of money. But that's not my fault she ended up in that situation because she got pregnant. Why should I be responsible for her poor life decisions? Now, my life, my work, and everything good in my life are suffering because of it. I've always tried to make the best decisions for myself, focusing on career and my personal growth. I've worked hard to build a stable, successful life, yet here I am, dragged into a mess I did not create. It's incredibly frustrating and overwhelming, and I truly need to find a way to navigate the situation without letting it destroy everything I've worked for. Update number one. Hey guys, thank you for the support and love. I'm truly grateful. I did notice some harsh comments though, and it saddens me that some people side with my mother and ex-husband. Well, hey, it's been five months since I wrote my last piece, and now I finally have time to sit down and write again. The past months have been an absolute whirlwind. Some people criticize me for being an ungrateful child who does not respect her mother. But let me tell you something about her. There is very, very little to be grateful for when she, you know, you have someone like her as your mom. She's the only one who gave birth to me, and that is, well, she didn't do anything for me growing up. She was never home. She was always out with men, different day, every man. I was raised by my grandparents, and people often mistook me for their child. My mother resented me more because despite my success, I failed as her child, rarely visiting her, and never sent her money. Yes, that's my fault. I should have known better, huh? But shouldn't this have been a family discussion behind closed doors rather than a public humiliation? Also, she often made snide remarks about me and my ex. The money we made, our house, and the things we bought, and she even mentioned how much I spent on my wedding and honeymoon. But it makes sense. She was probably jealous that we could afford all those things. And funnily enough, she uh, directed that jealousy towards me and not my ex. She was fond of him. They got along well, and sometimes making me feel like an outsider in my own home. Yet, I'd never thought that she would side with him over her own daughter. Anyways, a few things did happen in the last few months, which is why I haven't had the time to sit down and write an update. After my confrontation at my mother's house, I left in tears and frustration. The next day, she contacts me, right, with an unexpected offer. In her cold, cutthroat demeanor, she proposed a deal. $50,000 in exchange for what she calls valuable information. She had seen my financial reports and knew I did not have that kind of money. My business was failing and I was losing money rapidly. How did she expect me to come up with $50,000, rob a bank? Then she sent me a text with a picture, a shredded document with my ex-husband's name on it. I knew it was crucial as the money she demanded. I was desperate to stop my ex-husband from sabotaging my business, so... I reluctantly negotiated the deal down from 50000 to 20000 using my last emergency funds. After the money exchange, she revealed that my ex-husband used to embezzle funds from our company and suspected he might still be doing it. She provided me with lots of evidence, nearly enough for me to build a case and take him to court. Well, I was overwhelmed and hurt, but I knew there was no time to dwell on emotions. I needed to engage my business instincts and... Leaving my mom with a check, I immediately contacted my lawyer. I was determined to sue my ex despite the risk involved. So that's what I've been busy doing. Suing the man I once loved, it's taxing, let me tell ya. He's also enraged to find out my mom just casually switched sides. I guess he really thought she was in it because she genuinely cared about him. I don't know if she's ever genuinely cared about anyone but herself. 
but that's a story for a different time. I've blocked her, my ex-husband, to focus on the lawsuit, and I'll update you guys if something new happens, but I guess it really won't be that soon. Updates number two. Hey guys, you know, time seems to fly by when I was busy and exhausted that I did not find enough time to sit down and write an actual update. It's been three months since my last post and a lot has happened since then. But I guess that's better than nothing has happened, huh? The lawsuit was tough and messy, even worse than our divorce. Thankfully, I found help in the most unexpected places. I reached out to some former employees who shared my disdain for him, people who ended their professional relationship with our firm on a bad note. Of course, back when we were still together, I took my husband's words and believed that the conflicts were initiated and escalated by these people, not himself. I never once doubted that my husband might have been taking advantage of his position, which made some people very, very unhappy. Anyways, I thought of the possibility and scheduled meetings with as many former employees as I could find. Some of them have moved on and did not want to be involved, but some of them were extremely supportive of me. They provided me with company records, bills, documents, letters, and even meeting notes that I would not know existed otherwise. Together, we built a strong case and won, securing 180 grand in compensation. I don't want to dive into the legal details because that's boring, but I want you to know it was a hard-fought victory. However, the story does not end there. Once my mother found out how much money I received, she contacted me again demanding the remaining $30,000 from the original deal. She threatened to team up with my ex-husband and sell my business strategies to other startups if I refused. It was like deja vu. After winning my case, I thought I could finally breathe easy, but I guess I was wrong. It was really difficult to process this, but then it hit me. Maybe it wasn't just about the money, it was about the power. She wanted to assert her dominance over me to remind me that she could still make my life difficult just like that. Part of me wanted to give in just to make her go away and stop the harassment, but another part of me knew that giving her the money would only perpetuate the cycle of manipulation. It would only validate her tactics even more. I've taken a few actions, although they don't seem to be too impactful yet. I consulted my lawyer seeking legal advice and reassurance, and he confirmed me I already knew, legally, I didn't owe her anything beyond what was settled in court. But the emotional toll was harder to quantify. Each day brought another of her phone calls, another email demanding the 30000 It became a constant source of stress, and I had to take some time off work just because I could not focus. And I didn't want to drag people down with me. Thankfully, I do have the money to afford that, and I used the time alone to consider the consequences of refusing the demand. Yesterday, I made a decision to prioritize my own peace of mind and self-respect. I couldn't allow her to continue dictating my life. I sent her a clear and firm response, stating that I would not be giving her any more money. It was a boundary that I needed to set for my own mental and emotional health. But of course, she did not give up too easily. She kept threatening me, raising the amount of money to 80000 and telling me that she had reached out to my ex-husband, who had not responded yet, and it terrified me. It really did. She was serious about her threat and had nothing to lose, so she would follow through with it. Therefore, I know the action that I need to take. Update number three. Hey, guys, it's me. I'm back for an update. It was a tough period in my life. It really was, but I managed to get through it. It's been three months since my last update, and despite receiving both love and support along with hateful messages, flooding my inbox, I finally found the strength to stand up for myself once and for all. Well, of course, she was eager to meet up with me. It was pretty obvious, and I pretended to negotiate. Then when she did not agree to the terms, I pretended to beg her. She seemed so proud of herself when she heard me lower my ego, probably for the first time. We both knew that I am a very proud woman. She went on talking about how much I owe it to her because she has already given up her career for me. Then she talked about the way my ex always knew how to treat women right, and I didn't know how lucky I was, which really got on my nerves. She was siding with me to teach me a valuable lesson about how to be a good wife. I let her go on and on, and she didn't know that I had a recorder in my pocket. That's right, I recorded our conversation where she made her ridiculous demands and revealed her cunning plan. 
Deep down, it was breaking my heart to resort to such measure against my own mother. But I could not allow her to manipulate and sabotage me for a second longer. I needed to win at her game. Well, yes, compared to the 180000 I received from my trial when my ex-husband, 30000 might not seem like much, guys, right? But if she gets that money... Uh, who knows how much more she'll demand? This isn't about revenge. It's about taking back my power from my mother. If some of you can understand that and keep calling me ungrateful, then I'm sorry. You need medical help. After that, I met with my lawyer, who was probably happy to get so much business from one client in such a short period of time. He also empathized deeply with me. We began preparing our case with recordings and text, which he said were enough to win the trial. It was predictable that my mother would call to yell at me after I served her with a court order. She kept playing the mother card and called me a bunch of slurs. She was furious and I expected that. I didn't want her to go down without a fight. Otherwise, why am I even doing all this? She tried to manipulate me again, teasing me that she would reveal more about my ex-husband's illegal activities if I withdrew my appeal. But I didn't even flinch. No, he's already lost the lawsuit and I doubted she had anything useful now. So I kept my cool and carried on. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree and I could be just as cold as she was to me. Update number four. Hey, thank you for the love and support. So just as my lawyer predicted, we had a strong case based on the evidence alone. Still, I wanted to ensure our victory, so I went the extra mile by persuading my grandfather to be my witness. He lived with my mother, so I called him secretly, arranging a meeting, and drove to his city to take him to a secluded spot. Honestly, it was a huge challenge to convince my grandfather to testify against his own daughter. Although he uh, disapproved of her life choices, he did not want her to be punished by the law, especially at her age. What made him really consider testifying, though, was listening to the voice recordings that I made when I visited her. He would never think that his daughter would turn out to be such a cruel woman and mom. He was absolutely devastated, and the worst part was that he told me he never stopped her from pursuing her dreams. He only wanted her to stay at home and take care of me after she was knocked up. He wanted her to be responsible, but somehow in her head that meant stopping her from living her dream life. It baffles me how much she really thought she was the victim. Anyways, it took me a lot of time to get him on board, but one rainy night he calls me and says he would do it. Now, I know it was a harsh move. My grandfather's actions might have sent the message that I mattered more to him than she ever did, and he would always pick me, something she never did. The disappointment in her eyes when she heard his name and saw him slowly walking with his cane to the witness stand made her realize it was the end game. At 87 years of age, my grandfather's memory was remarkable. He remembered everything my mother said out loud. He mentioned that uh, she was a bright woman, but never used her wit for any good. When she came up with her brilliant plan to blackmail me, she never stopped talking about it, ever. While my mother thought Grandpa was just watching TV when she was mumbling to herself in the kitchen, he was actually listening to the entire thing, and still he did not know then that my mother was plotting against me. He had his suspicions, sure, because whenever we talked to each other, he would always try to look out for me. He would say things like, Careful with the money, kid. That's how I knew he would be my key witness. So that's how I won the case. The financial compensation from my ex-husband's case was finally mine, and I felt liberated after filing a restraining order against my mother. I thought I would finally be happy, however... The victory came as a significant personal cost because it shattered my grandfather's heart. Despite his support in court, he told me he didn't want to see either me or my mother again and wanted no part of us at all. I was devastated. Cutting ties with my mother was easy, but losing my grandpa, who meant everything to me, was a sacrifice I had not anticipated. Yet victories often come with sacrifices, don't they? But let me know, do you think I made the right choice?